members of the school committee, I'm just going to take a, a roll call vote since this is the first time we've done it under the revised open meeting law. So, um, Mr. Minicello. Ms. Azak. Present. Ms. Mendez. Mr. D'Agostino, Vice Chairman. Present. Mr. Rodriguez. Present. Ms. Sullivan. Present. Has joined the conference. Mr. Sullivan. Here. And Mr. Minicello, Attorney Minicello just joined. Here. How are you? Good. Thanks, Tom. Do we have uh, the Superintendent of the Schools? Mike Thomas is here. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. So, first of all, before we uh, before I call the meeting to order, I want to thank um, I want to thank the superintendent. I want to thank Melinda Campbell of his office. I want to thank uh, Joe Campbell. Uh, this is uh, this is going to be streamed live. It is being streamed live as we speak uh, under the open meeting law revised by Governor Baker. He allows for municipalities and committees and boards. Uh, in councils to do this in light of the COVID-19 epidemic. So I do want to thank everybody for calling in. Uh, I want to thank all the efforts. It was a collaborative effort uh, with a revised agenda as well. So with that being said, I am going to call the meeting of uh, this Brockton School Committee for March 26, 2020, it being 7 p.m. With that being said, I am going to uh, salute the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, members of the committee. I will, uh, I will again just go down uh, and take a roll call just to establish a quorum. Uh, again, we have uh, Mr. Menicello. Present. Ms. Azak. Present. Ms. Mendez. Present. Mr. D'Agostino. Present. Mr. Rodriguez. Present. Ms. Sullivan. Present. Mr. Sullivan. Present. And the non-voting uh, superintendent of the schools, Mike Thomas. Present. And uh, as mayor and chair, I'll be uh, I'll be chairing the meeting tonight. Um, and again, because this is new, if anybody has any questions, by all means, I am respectfully going to ask you to mute uh, the phone. Um, and again, when we uh, when we go into uh, Q and A, if any of you have any questions as uh, duly elected school committee members, you can feel free to un unmute. Uh, with that being said, the second agenda item on the agenda tonight is the consent agenda. Uh, which is A, B, C, D, and E. Um, if you'd like, I can read those. If anybody wants to take those out, out of uh, separately or collectively, uh, I entertain a motion on that. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. So there's a motion made, uh, and what I, I'll read it into the record. It was a motion made and properly second to, to, to approve the consent agenda. A is the approval of the March 3, 2020 regular school committee meeting minutes. Subsection B is approval of the March 3, 2020 finance subcommittee meeting report. Subsection C is the approval of the February 27, 2020 accounts review subcommittee meeting report. Subsection D of the consent agenda is approval of, of February 29th, 2020 school committee retreat report. And then the last subsection E is the approval of the March 15th, 2020 special school committee meeting report. There is a motion on the floor. It was properly seconded to take these uh, and approve them. I'll have to do a roll call vote on that, uh, but because it was duly uh, voted on and second, um, the mayor as chair, I will vote yes Mr. Minicello. Yes. Ms. Azak. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Yes. Mr. D'Agostino, Vice Chairman. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Ms. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. We have a unanimous uh, approval on the consent agenda. 
uh, duly voted on by all members of the school committee present. Um, any questions on that, members of the committee? No. Thank yeah. you. We'll go on to uh, number three of the uh, agenda, which is communications. And I don't know if we do or do not have any communications. Anybody aware of any communications that would be addressed this evening? None, nope. I, none that I'm aware of. I, too, am not aware of any. Uh, with that being said, we will move on to the next, which, again, is the report of Superintendent of Schools, Mike Thomas. And, uh, again, I just want to, before we go into this, I want to thank Mike, and I want to let it known to the teachers, the parents, and the students, really what a wonderful leader we have for the Brockton Public Schools during this COVID-19 crisis, uh, Mike and I are joined at the hip. I, I, I joke about it, but I mean it. I'm speaking more to him more than I talk to my wife. Um, and it's, it's really a positive, collaborative effort. So I do want to thank you publicly, Mike. I want the school committee members to be thanked as well and the city councilors. And, you know, we, we're really proud of the fact that we're working together during trying, trying times, unexpected, unchartered times. But I've said this, and Mike and I taped the video today, we will get through this as a community, as a city, as a commonwealth, as a nation. Uh, but with that being said, Mike, thank you, and, and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I really appreciate that. And I thank you for your, um, your partnership over the last uh, several days. And uh, we've, had, we've spent a lot of time together. And I thank you for your support of, of not only me, but for all the staff, teachers, and all the staff of the Brockton Public Schools and the families we serve. And I also thank the school committee um, for their support, because uh, all of you have called to check in, uh, all of you have offered to help. Uh, you've been out at the uh, grab and go lunch location. You've reached out to people to um, get donations. So I, I really appreciate your support during this very trying time. So I just want to start by saying that I, you know we fully understand how hard this is on the families that we serve, um, how frustrating it is. Uh, for kids not to be in school where we all want them to be. Uh, it's fr frustrating in my own home. Um, and uh, we understand that, and we are working hard every day. Um, we are constantly on the phone, constantly on virtual meetings, trying to figure out how to best support our students. So, you know, I want to thank the mayor's team. I want to thank the school committee. I want to thank my executive team uh, who have been working 12 to 15-hour days. I want to thank Kim Gibson, who has been with us um, pretty much the whole time, um, working on behalf of, of the families of Brockton and on behalf of all her members. Um, I want to thank Chatwells and our food service workers who have been amazing during this. Uh, they did not hesitate to come out and start serving lunches. Um, and we closed um, schools on a Thursday, which was March 13th, and we were serving lunches on that Monday. That's right. Um, in four locations, and then within, I believe, four days, we had expanded that to 10 locations across the city, so we were made sure it was accessible to families throughout the city. So I can't say enough about Chatwells and all the food service workers that work with Tom Burke and all the effort that um, the executive team put in. I also want to thank uh, Jeff Hodges for um, her great communication leading us through the way and making sure parents have been informed every step of the way. We try to parents inform and send messages either through text messages or phone calls pretty much every night of the week. So I want to thank everybody for all their hard work. It's, it's been a lot of effort by all the teachers, the, the principals, the assistant principals, the associate, associate principals, and all our department heads and directors. And we're all working together to try to get through this the best we can. So um, again, our lunch program is 10 locations. It's open from 10, uh, 1130 to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, and that's the grab-and-go lunches, and um, it's been going great. It's been going flawless, and I really, again, I really appreciate, um, you know, all the work that's been put into that. And I know it's um, people that are going out of their homes and taking a risk, and they haven't even hesitated to do that. So we really appreciate that. I don't know if anybody had any questions on um, the grab-and-go program. Mike, I had one. Sure. The lunch program for tomorrow, is that breakfast for Saturday and Sunday as well? Correct. Um, Aldo, can you fill us in here on the um, um, exactly for the Friday meals, uh, how they get those um, 
meals for uh, Saturday and Sunday as well? Yes. Um, what happens is the, um, the Food and Drug Administration has given a waiver that since they know that families are dependent on these meals, and especially in this time of the virus and the limit to going to the grocery stores and, and leaving your homes, they've allowed us to prepare your Friday breakfast and lunch, Saturday breakfast and lunch, Sunday breakfast and lunch, and serve them all at once. So the families can drive in, pick them up, and have meals for the entire weekend. So that's that'll be done every Friday until um, either the, the FDA changes it or until the coronavirus uh, situation is over. Members of the committee, um, when we we ask a question, we just have to identify ourselves. So um, uh, school committee member Tim Sullivan asked a question. To Superintendent Aldo Petronio, chief financial officer for the public schools, answered it as well. We just need to note that for the records. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So next, we're going to go to the online learning options. Um, so as you know from the guidance from the Department of Education that came out uh, when we first closed, um, the guidance came out for them. I want to say it was um, probably around March 18th, um, and it was about making sure we were providing, when we found out we were closing for three weeks and the governor closed us for three weeks until April 6th, through April 6th, we... Um, we had to make sure we were uh, providing our students with enrichment and engagement activities. Uh, so um, we've been working hard to post those online. Um, and, you know, that has, has gone well. But, again, we, uh, we're working hard to update those often. Um, and we also, I want to fill you in on new guidance that came out today from the Department of Education. So um, we're scrambling around to, we're not a district that is set up for, online learning. Uh, I've been seeing some emails in the superintendent listserv or some other districts who are very affluent being able to flip a switch and move their students to virtual learning um, with pretty much not skipping a beat. Um, it still never compares to um, face to face instruction. Uh, but as you know, with our severe budget cuts over the last several years, that is not something we have been set up to be able to just do right away. Uh, and we also understand that our families do not all have um, a laptop or an electronic device at home or sometimes not the internet access at home to be able to, to do online learning. So uh, that's a struggle, but we are working hard to uh, solve that problem and do our best within the next week to 10 days to make sure that um, we, you know, we get something set up online. And I'm gonna have, um, I'm gonna have Ethan Cancel June Saber McGuire and Cliff Murray weigh in on um, the program we're looking at, a program that we currently have in the system. So as you know, we were setting up for an online learning school, um, and obviously that's a little bit at uh, a pause now, um, but we were going to use the, um, you know, the bank um, over on um, Oak Street, and um, we're not set up there yet, but we did have the program um, that we had started, which is an online program. And that's the program we're looking to now to um, possibly use. Now, I want to be clear that um, we do have an MOU between myself and um, the BEA um, as far as the expectations for the teachers, and that was something that, you know, we needed to enter into. So, obviously, these are times that nobody has ever been through before. So, uh, we wanted to make sure everybody knew it was excessive of them through remote learning and support of our students. So. Um, nothing as far as anything we we move on between so we have an agreement between now and April 6th So now we're working on what we do with the new guidance from the Department of Education How we're going to move forward after April 6th, so that's what we're setting up now So I'll let um, Dr. Cancel uh, June Saber McGuire and, and Dr. Cliff Murray come in and, uh, and fill you in on a program that we have in the district But it's only been used for credit recovery. It's been used for students who are either can't come to school for um, medical conditions or other uh, issues. Um, so this is the program we're looking to expand and possibly use um, once we work this out and obviously once um, we work with the BEA as well. So I'll let, um, I'll let Dr. Kinsell, Dr. Murray, and, uh, and June weigh in. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. All right. Hello, Hi, this is Ethan Kinsell. This is June. How are you? Good evening, everybody. And, uh, 
All right. So, so I, I do you want to start it, Jim? No, I just I I mean obviously we're going to talk about edge annuity, but up until then, until we're ready to launch that, I just want to assure the parents, families, um, the students that are listening that until we're really ready to launch that, that there are resources that will continue to be available to them both online and we plan to have printed resources available in the food locations and the food service locations across the district. So that effort will continue and I'm happy to talk about that after we start to talk a little bit more about edgenuity. All right, so thank you. And um, as our chief academic officer stated, we are fortunate enough that um, we have a program called Edgenuity, which is not easy to say, but it is an online uh, platform which allows students to take courses, and these are uh, well, courses from uh, potentially sixth grade up to twelfth grade. It, it all of the core uh, subjects: ELA, math, science, social studies. There are um, some national test prep uh, classes involved, MCAS test prep, world languages, Spanish, French, Chinese, German, and Latin. There are electives. So it's, it's a wide range. There are AP classes. And this was originally brought to the district. Um, Sharon Wolder was instrumental in this, as uh, Superintendent Thomas uh, pointed out. We wanted to be able to have offerings for kids to do credit recovery to meet the need that they had for um, <clears throat> catching up, moving ahead possibly. So it's an online platform. And the thing that we want to stress, as our chief academic officer stated, this, this doesn't, <clears throat> this is never and has never been designed to take the place of an in-person teacher. It is a tool that teachers can use to help students progress through. Because it is online, students would be able to access it remotely, so that's helpful. And um, Dr. Murray uh, has told us that the initial reports from uh, a community from the students taking it have been positive. We have tried it out on a small number of students. Uh, that was our intent. But it turns out that the licensing is for an entire site. So as of right now, we already have licenses for all students 9 through 12. Whether we use it, how we roll it out, that remains to be seen. But we have the capacity right now to, to roll it out. We also have some licenses um, at the alternative schools for grades 6 through 8. A lot of the heavy lifting uh, behind the scenes to make sure that our rosters are able to flow seamlessly overnight um, and, and update automatically, that's already been taken care of. So um, that is the program. I can uh, bore you with uh, more details if you want, but I think that that's a pretty good um, overview of it. Thank you very much. Uh Ms. Saber McGuire and Dr. Cancel, are there any committee members that have questions? And if so, if you could kindly state your name and then ask the question. See, there hey, is. Mr. Mayor, Tim Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Dr. Cancel, what about the lower grades, the uh, grades one through five? What, do you have anything for them? Absolutely, okay. we do, and I will. I will let uh, so, our chief yeah. academic officer tell you all about them because we have a very, very rich uh, supply of uh, high-quality resources. So yes, Mr. Sullivan, how are you? This is what I was Good. referring to at the beginning. Um, so at the elementary level, we really do have quite a few really high-quality, both online and print resources that we're using in our schools, in all of our classrooms. So those are the resources that we're really focused on making available to our students and our families. So if you were to look at the Brockton Public Schools um, Learning Resources website and went over to K-5, to you would see that this past week 
has a series of lessons posted for ELA and math for every day of the week that really when I looked at what came out of the commissioner's guidance today, we really are pretty close to meeting what the state is actually asking us to do at the elementary level. For instance, if you, I'm looking at a grade four math lesson, you'll see the standards posted, there's a clear objective, there's an instructional learning video that the students and families can go on that connects back to that standard and objective. There's a practice worksheet that again connects back to both the standard and the objective. There's a problem of the day that the students are able to engage with and then there are actual games both that can be played with um, students and if families that are available to sort of engage the, the families in those games. Again, all connected back to the objective, to the standard. And then there's also a link to some of the online resources that we have available to us that will take the families directly to uh, an online resource that connects back to whatever that objective is. For instance, the one I'm looking at is compare two fractions. And so that's grade four, the grade four math lesson, day one, but you'll see that that's a consistent thread that is going to be available to our students um, every single day. And something similar for ELA, you'll see it's again day one through five, there are objectives, there's a, a weekly newsletter that will go home, that will, well, go home will be available to the families when they go to that link uh, on a weekly basis on either Sunday night or Monday, depending on when we put the resource up. And then I know that the superintendent plans on having uh, did resources. I don't, again, know exactly how many, but we will have printed resources for families that aren't able to either print or to access some of these resources online. So that's the elementary plan. Um, it's, it's a, I think, a pretty good plan. Obviously, it's going to take a lot of work to keep it going over the number of weeks where this extension has just been, um, been announced. And I do want to say that there have been a number of people that I really do want to say have done tremendous work, coordinators, Dr. Andra, Dr. Ronan, the instructional coaches in our schools, our principals, associate principals. It's really been a team effort to put these resources um, together in a way that I think are, are a meaningful opportunity for our kids to continue to be engaged in their learning. So I hope thank that you. answers your question about the elementary. Yep. Yes, it does. Thank you. It sounds really, really good. Thank Th you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Any other school committee members have questions for uh, any of the parties on the call? Seeing none, we'll we'll move on to the next uh, stated uh, item, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I just want to remind families that um, if you do have um, internet access to home and a, and a device, please make sure you continue to visit bpfma.org, our website. Um, there, um, you can pull it right up and there's information, uh, all our outreach information about COVID-19, um, the information about the grab and go um, locations, but also the large bubble under um, learning resources at home. Um, we, we passed out for the last two weeks um, learning packets. We've printed thousands, thousands of them. Um, we are now reloading to new updated learning packets. So um, it takes a long time to um, print those and get those ready. So by next Wednesday, we'll have updated. So the ones that we did give out um, the last couple weeks, they're, they're scheduled to last between seven and 10 days. Um, and we'll have more printed for next Wednesday to give out at the 10 locations. I want to thank the principals who've been going out to the one locations um, and giving those, um, giving those packets out. And um, again, we'll have updated packets um, when we okay. go with the book. All right, so um, I want to speak a little bit about um, the state and I want to talk about um, so what we've done in anticipation um, 
for a longer closing was um, I had IT and Dan Vigian prepare 5,000 laptops that we pulled from across the schools. Um, we updated, we put a filter on them. Um, they are all now located at Brockton High School and um, basically for possible deployment um, to families that may need them. However, um, we need the state to make a ruling on the, the MCAS testing. Um, they have at this time only uh, postponed the testing um, through now until uh, May 4th. And um, unfortunately, as you know, as I, and I don't want to keep saying this, but I have to because of our budget cuts. We have, we're not a one-to-one -one district where our students are uh, able to take and, and send a, a laptop home with every student. So um, it's really, I can't deploy these until the state makes a ruling on the MCAS because if um, when we do get back to school um, and the state decides to have the MCAS, then um, we would need these devices to test. And if they weren't available to test, um, they would, um, they probably could replace the superintendent at that time. So, um, we, but they are ready for deployment. Um, we're hoping that the state makes a ruling on MCAS either tomorrow or Monday. And once that happens, we'll get a survey out through each school. Um, the principals will do a survey with their families to see who needs a, a laptop. And then we will work on how to deploy those by school to the families that need them. And that would be one device per family. And then um, obviously that would really help and support families to be able to um, do whatever programs, the programs on a, the learning that's already posted online, but also if, if we move to using an online platform like Edgenuity, then um, you know, the students would be able to go on and perform that. But uh, that's pretty much our plan, and, and that's where we are right now. But again, we, we need to know what's going on with the MCAS, and hopefully we have a, a ruling on that by either tomorrow or Monday morning. Thank I you. Any questions about that? Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Committee members, any questions for the superintendent? One question, Tim Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan. Mike, as far as the, uh, I heard you give it getting computers ready. But what about the internet for people who do not have internet in Barkham? We there the work. Comcast, Xfinity, Comcast has set up hotspots. Um, so we, when we give out the computer, um, we'll, we'll actually have a printed piece of paper to, um, that would help um, people log into that free service. Um, Comcast is supposed to be expanding that, so um, that would be available as well. We've actually, that information has been put out there for families that who may not have had internet uh, service but do have it a device at home. Uh, so we've sent that information out. So. Uh, we'll continue to make that information available, and we would give, with the laptop, we would have a sheet attached, which would give instructions about how to log on to one of those hotspot, Wi-Fi hotspots. And, you know, May, you, you might know a little bit more about the, what Comcast has done um, in the city of Brockton for these Wi-Fi hotspots. Yeah, so I, I, I can tell you in my, in my past life when I did some work for them, um, they have a program called Internet Essentials that they utilize and, um, and Brockton benefits by that. So there is a variety of, uh, of, of, of hotspot locations uh, that would be itemized and on that sheet of paper that the superintendent is talking about, it would be uh, information for the, the parents or the guardians, uh, location driven so that um, the people that needed to utilize those hotspots would know exactly where to go. But it has been a program that's helped uh, many communities throughout the Commonwealth. One final question, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Would, would that internet access be free? It, it, it is. It is, Mr. Sullivan. The way that they do it, um, they provide it to the community. And, um, and again, what the superintendent is saying is it's, it's locked and loaded. It's ready to go. They, they'll have the information. Uh, and when those 5,000 laptops are going to be able to be released, one per family, uh, they'll be attached to that just in case people needed to utilize that hotspot. Okay, thank you. Committee members, any other questions okay. for the superintendent? Yes. Um, Mayor Mark D'Agostino, just wanted to let the committee members know um, on the topic of MCAS and 
Student Opportunity Act. I did reach out on behalf of the committee um, to Representatives Cronin and Cassidy just to um, indicate our concerns and ask for their support on, on um, you know, on that issue. And, and they did indicate they, they understood and, and it was being worked on. And um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that I did reach out on, on behalf of the committee for, on, on that. Thank you, Vice Chairman. And I, too, uh, mentioned it to the three state reps and the state senator, and I know the superintendent has as well. So um, they're working diligently for us, but ultimately our hands are tied right now. We hope, as the superintendent says, that we'll know tomorrow or no later than Monday. Any other questions for the superintendent about that specific topic he was talking about, or should we move on to uh, subsection B, which is finances during closure payroll for employees? Uh, may I have one more thing? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Absolutely. I missed that. Yes, please, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. So I wanted um, Sharon Walder, um, who's on the call, executive team member and chief of student support services, has, again, like all executive team members, has spent a ton of time um, and um, doing a ton of different things like we all have, but she has uh, spent a lot of time um, with the special education department and Laurie Mason and also with the bilingual education department with Kelly Jones. So, um, you know, people, we, need, we really need to keep, and, and the thing about a district like ours who is not ready to just jump to full virtual online um, and one of, the, one of the reasons for that is also, you know, we have a lot of students with special needs, and we have a lot of students who are English language learners. And when, we, when we're making plans and, and doing um, different things that we need to do for our students, um, we always have them at the forefront and make sure that it's um, equity for all students that we serve and educate. Um, and obviously, when you're in a situation where you're trying to uh, have students learn from home, um, you know, when you have students with special needs and students with uh, uh, that English language learners, it's, it's, it's very important for us to make sure that what we're providing is equal for all students and accessible. So Sharon has spent a lot of time on that over the last several days, and, um, and she's going to speak about that. She's also going to speak about, obviously, something that's very important, and that's the, the one, the, one of the things we focused on after we uh, made sure that we were able to, see, to give students food and see families with our lunch program, but it's also it's the social emotional piece. And, you know, what this has done um, and the burden this has brought on families, but also um, what it's doing to our kids. Because everybody knows, as we all went to school, how much fun and how, how much you enjoyed school and how much school is a structure. Um, and even though some kids dread going to school, they, I think they love to be with their friends, obviously, right. and they love to just, you know, have a, have a routine and a structure in place. And, you know, that that's, you know, been blown up. Um, since, you know, since March the 12th and now all the way to, to May 4th. So it's very important that we keep that in the forefront of the social and emotional well-being of our, of our students and our families. So I'm going to have Sharon speak on those, those three things. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Ms. Walder. Yes, hello, it's Sharon Walder. Good evening. Uh, I'll start with, good evening. I'll start with uh, the work that's been done for English language learners. Uh, the department is led by Kelly Jones, and uh, what they have done is the facilitators all have district issue phones, so they have been fielding a number of calls since we have been out of school, uh, providing parents with information, uh, helping them figure out how to access the resources that we have online and to use uh, translator uh, tools like Google Translator and the translator on Facebook so that they can uh, work to access the information that we're providing. Uh, I do want to point out that what the district has been providing has all been translated uh, or is just a matter of a click for translators to make sure that people um, are able to uh, get the information in, in their primary languages. Uh, they've also provided um, information to principals and teachers on um, Trans who can do translations for them if they need a translator on a call with them, uh, and some tips for people to use when they're communicating with EL students and their families. So all of that has, has gone out. Uh, the department head or the uh, director is meeting regularly uh, with her leadership team to make sure that they are constantly 
up to date on what's going on and able to provide information uh, to teachers and, of course, the students and families. Um, they have a button on the BPS website, the Learning from Home button, uh, that you'll see bilingual and ESL is on there, and on that are a number of uh, learning opportunities and quite a few web resources that uh, are identified also by language so that students and families will know which of those sources they can uh, go into that will help them with uh, the language needs that they have. In special education, uh, the special education uh, is led by the director, Lori Mason. Lori has been taking calls and emails on a regular basis. I, I want to point out, too, that the district today put out a one-page resource guide uh, that went to all the grab-and-go locations and was distributed to people uh, with a number of email addresses uh, and how to access different aspects of the Brockton Public Schools website as well as some of the local mental health organizations to support families in the community. Uh, Lori has continuously responded to questions about special education. As you can imagine, this is a very tough one because uh, trying to help support families, especially how to deliver any type of uh, support when a student is learning from home, uh, has been quite a challenge. And so she has been able to help direct people uh, as appropriately. Um, currently, what is expected of the district is uh, that th we focus on regular communication with families, which we are doing, uh, to provide two modes of instruction, one being a uh, low-tech mode, which would be the paper handouts, which we have continued to provide, and they're con considered uh, low-tech even if you have to click online to get them, because it is basically a handout, uh, but we are also expected to provide some level of um, instruction to, to students with disabilities so that they can maintain the skills that they have and everything that we do with them um, in that realm is to help them maintain those skills and review things that they've, that they've already learned. Um, Lori has been working diligently with all of her department chairs and providing support to teachers as they move forward with reaching out to students. There's also a button on the website uh, for special education in the learning at home section that has uh, resources for students in specialized programs uh, and a, a range of resources uh, for all grade levels. So she, that has been, um, and she will continue to, to take calls from uh, and emails from parents and families. The area that we get a number of questions about are team meetings, and at this time the district is not holding team meetings, and we are working on a system of making sure that uh, we communicate to our families, have upcoming team meetings, uh, what, what system the, the district will have for that. In terms of student support services uh, with social-emotional learning and the school adjustment counselors, the school adjustment counselors have been fabulous reaching out and working with uh, families and making sure that people are connected to the resources that the district has. We are currently working on developing a support services team that would be uh, probably 12 adjustment counselors and three nurses that will have district issued phones uh, that will field calls from parents and families as we move forward because we know we'll get more calls and people will need more access to those services as we go along. So. Uh, that's in progress, and once we have that up and running on the homepage of the Boston Public Schools, uh, Jeff is working with us to put a button on the homepage just for social uh, resources and services. Thank you very much, Ms. Walder. Are there any committee members that have any additional questions for Sharon? Seeing none, we'll, we'll move on. Thank you again, Ms. Walder. Yes, um, Mayor, one more thing. Just I would be remiss if I didn't thank um, uh, Dr. Cobb, um, also Dan Vigent and his IT team. Um, Dr. Cobb um, oversaw the, the, you know, the gathering of the 5,000 laptops and 
He worked closely with Dan Vigent and the members of the IT department to pretty quickly, within pretty within four days, get them ready at the at the high school. Um, you made sure they were all working and needed the filters on them that mm -hmm. that were required. And um, you know how how fast they turned this around. Again, I want to I want to thank Dr. Cobbs and, and the IT department for for how hard they worked on that. And um, also, I want to thank. Um, Aldo and all the work he did, he's done with Ken Thompson with all the planning around making sure that the lunches um, and the drivers got everything where they needed to go, making sure the printed packets were picked up. Um, Dr. Murray himself at Brockton High has been in the print shop printing thousands of papers. Um, so, you know, everybody has pretty much done every job to try to do everything we can to make sure we support our family. So, um, and Pretty much that. Um, that's it for me, and I'll have a, I'll have a few things later, but um, that I'll ask Kim Gibson to join me on. But um, that's that's it for me right now. Mr. Superintendent, I too I too want to thank um, on behalf of the school committee all, all the individuals you mentioned. I mean, it's, it really is a combined professional effort, and and without you know everybody working together as a team, we would not be achieving what we are right now for the for the students that we serve. So. Um, thank you for that, and, and, and we can move on the, uh, the next agenda item um, unless there's any questions. Mr. Superintendent, could you address um, sub subsection B on the uh, report of the superintendent of the schools, please? Sure. So finances, um, I wanted to update you on this, and I wanted to have Aldo Petronio um, join me. So um, as you know, that um, all Brockton Public Schools employees who receive a regular paycheck as their main source of income um, are all getting paid. Um, and that, I think, is very important. What, um, and I want to thank the school committee for that. Um, you know, we had that discussion during our emergency meeting, and you were clear um, that that was very important to you, that the, um, that the employees that work um, for us um, were all going to continue to get a paycheck. Uh, again, their regular salary. Um, and I got to thank Aldo, Diane Shaw, and the payroll department and her team because um, they've been spending a lot of time. And then there's some, you know, there's some hourly employees that they had to weed through several of them to to make sure that they were clear on, on payment for them. So um, I, I'll have Aldo come in and um, explain the process, and, and um, he can answer any questions about, you know, if you have specific questions about the groups of people getting paid or, or the positions that are being paid. So. Um, Aldo can go over that. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Hi, this is Aldo Petronio. So as the superintendent said, I've worked closely with him, with uh, Kathy Moran, human, her department, the human resources department, and her supervisors. We work through all the various employee groups, and as the superintendent said, anyone who's on a salary, we continue to pay their salary. So as we work through, there are a lot of employees that are hourly. Um, some don't always have the same amount of hours. So if the, if the group was consistent and they did 30 and a quarter hours a week, that's what they're going to continue to receive. If they weren't consistent, went through really employee by employee to see if they've been with us, um, you know, back to as far as January 1st. Have they worked regular hours? Are they still on the payroll? Some of them we came up with um, an average weekly number of hours, and if that's the case, that's what we're going to pay them. If they weren't, you know, with a set number of hours, so we've gone through and and and. Basically, there's 3,030 employees as we began this. So we went through and made a notation for every one of them as to how they would be paid. Um, the ones who won't get paid will be like a per diem sub who's only called in when needed. Someone who works for us sporadically that, again, is only comes by when we need them. But anyone that has been working basically a regular routine, um, we've worked out some hours for them. Uh, anyone who's a retiree, um, we're not. Recording stopped. In there? Hello? Still here, Aldo. Okay. So, anyone's a retiree, um, we, I, we've determined that they're already receiving a paycheck. They already have income. And the goal of this was to try and um, help everyone maintain some sort of income. So, um, again, we've, we've, over the years, we've always had a number of retirees that, again, come in sporadically to help us. So, they're not included in, in this overall um, evaluation and paycheck of. of the various employees. So we think we've got it down pretty well. Um, 
We've gone through the list several times, and I think tomorrow or uh, yes, I think recording started. We're transmitting all of those, um, all of those employees to City Hall, and City Hall, in turn, with the Treasurer's Office, will issue the payments. And it, it, most employees in the school department are direct deposit, so the, the checks will arrive as they usually do. Anyone who's not um, in the past who would send the checks directly to each school for those people, so all checks are going to be mailed at this point. There are no schools to send them to. There is no um, um, staff to be in place to have people pick up checks. So everything is being stamped and mailed uh, by City Hall. So that's how we're handling all of the uh, employee staff. And I can talk about vendors if, if you have questions on vendors. Mr. Uh, Mr. Petronio, thank you. School committee members, any questions relative to what Aldo just uh, opined on? Yes, Mayor um, and, and Mr. Petronio, uh, Mark D'Agostino, thank you, first of all, uh, Aldo, for everything you've been doing to try and, and, and work through the, the financial side of this. Um, I well, did have a question. Um, I know we were waiting for guidance on, on vendors, um, and, I mean, you know, some are obviously large organizations, but we also have some vendors that are, you know, independent contractor, you know, uh, uh, people as well. So I was curious as to had we received guidance um, on, on the vendor issue at this point. We have not. Um, we've I've spoken with um, the, the, the Department of Ed and their finance department, and until we hear something from higher up, right now the Mass General Law says unless services have been rendered, or unless your contract says someone is receiving a payment for um, just as part of the contract, no, they, they cannot be paid. Um, when I know that uh, myself and I know many others are getting phone calls and emails from uh, many of the transportation companies for a student and other companies. They want us to pay their drivers. At this point, we have no legal, no legal grounds to pay them with. If I submit any invoices to the city auditor, the city auditor is going to say, when did the services occur? And if the services have not occurred, there is no way to pay them. I've spoken to my counterparts in Fall River and Worcester. Um, they're all in the same boat. We're all waiting for guidance. I have a, a, a conference call Monday with all the school business officers in the state and Jay Sullivan, who is the, um, the head of finance for the Department of Ed. And the, the, the number one issue for Monday is to, these transportation vendors, because they're not only emailing us and the mayor, and they're emailing every city and town in the mayor. We've received correspondence from the Teamsters Union, same thing. At this point, my only um, answer really to them is your drivers can apply for unemployment like everyone else at this point that's not actively employed. But until and when the either governor or the attorney general's office says that we're going to allow something you know, uh, contrary to the mass general law of no goods, no services, no payment, we can't move on that. There's nothing we can do. Okay, thank you. If you can just, whenever we do finally get some guidance, um, communicate that to, to the committee, that'd be great. I will, I will. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. Any other committee members have a question for Mr. Petronio? Yes, Tim Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan, please. Aldo. Yes. If, if there's a mistake, and somebody, you were talking about the uh, your average of hours, if there's a mistake, is there a number they can call? Um, well, the, I only have, I've had staff in three days this week. I'm trying to limit it to two days next week. I'm um, trying to minimize the amount of time people come in the office. But if they want to email, um, you know, they can email me. They can email, um, I guess the one email they see online all the time is Jess Hodges. But um, if they can email um, my account, Aldo E. Petronio at BPSMA, Org. I mean, they're, they're, I'm pretty sure they're all online. I'll, you know, I'll get back to them. I, I'll try and do it the same day, but absolutely. Or if okay. they want to go to their union president, have the union president contact me, or their principal, have their principal contact me, that's fine also. Aldo, this is the mayor. Do you mind uh, spelling out your email address for those that uh, are listening? Yes. A L D O E P. E-T-R-O-N-I-O at B as in Brockton, P as in public, 
www.pennsylvaniaschoolma.org. Thank you, Aldo. You're welcome. Members of the committee, any additional questions? Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Any additional questions from Mr. Petronio from the committee? Seeing none, we'll, we'll move on to uh, subsection C of the superintendent of the school's report, please. Um, I also want to just back up for a second. And also, I, I also didn't thank uh, Dr. Kathy Moran from HR, who has spent um, a ton of time at Central working with Aldo to, right. um, to figure out the, uh, the payment and also has also worked with um, the union heads and, um, and stayed in touch with all the union presidents during this time. So I want to thank... Kathy and her team for all the work they have done. Um, we really, it's much appreciated. Uh, it was very important that we made sure that, um, you know, people weren't going to miss a paycheck. So her and Aldo and their teams did a great job making sure that um, that didn't happen. Um, so next we'll move into, this is the first read. Um, I know it's um, hard to think about next year um, for what we're going through, but um, we did it. We needed to get a first read in for next year's um, school calendar. Um, so if anybody had any questions on that, um, you, know, you obviously feel free to ask. Uh, I have a quick question, Joyce Azak. Ms. Azak, go ahead, please. Um, so this is, um, I'm looking at this calendar. So I know sometimes we, we run into issues where events of being have are scheduled on a holiday um how can we make sure that any events that are going on are run through um central first so we can just make sure um yeah. when they are added to the calendars that we're avoiding you know whether it's jewish holiday catholic holidays um things like that because we are running into a lot of that Um, so, thank you, Joyce. So, um, what we do is this is the calendar that shows the vacations and all the, the legal holidays and the start of, and end of school. So then we have the district calendar, which is color-coded, that Jeff Hodges will take over. Um, and you're right, we um, have to make sure we stay away from, like, scheduling parent conferences or orientations um, if there's a Jewish holiday or another religious holiday. So, and also not to double book things that are happening across the district if there's an art show not going on the same time as a music um a concert or uh, a play isn't going on at the fourth school at the same time there's one going on at brockton high so um jeff um you obviously joined us at this um after the school year started um so she'll be taking that on going forward um so she'll be the master keeper of that district calendar and that's the calendar that is color coded that we send out to uh, to our families uh, once the calendar is set in stone by the school committee and also that district calendar is a shared drive on, on um, um, for all employees and that has to be checked and then run through Jeff going forward to make sure things are not double booked and making sure things are not um, put on um, religious holidays as well so I thank you for bringing that up no great thank you so much Thank you, Ms. Azak. Any other additional questions for this uh, school calendar, which is just the first read by any committee members? Seeing none, we'll, we'll move on. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. I'd like to make a motion. The motion is that we approve. The motion is that we just we, we, we don't, at this time, Mr. Sullivan, we don't need to do a motion on that. Thank you, though. Um, so there's no other question. We will definitely have a second. Yes, we will. We Our will. Neighbor. No, though, there'll be, second. this is just the first read. Yep, there'll be second, and we'll vet it out. And, um, again, we'll, we'll make any revisions that are, uh, you know, applicable and appropriate. So um, so hold that motion, but we'll get back to you in a, in a couple of weeks on that, Mr. Sullivan. Um, we'll go on to subsection D if we could. Bye. Items to refer to subcommittee. Superintendent, please. Right now, I would like to ask the school committee if we could schedule a finance subcommittee meeting virtually, obviously, for next Thursday night. 
as we're moving into the new guidance from the uh, Department of Education. And as you know, with the extended closure, um, I think it, um, we're going to, the school committee, uh, Dr. Moran and myself, um, need to enter into, um, into um, MOUs with all our unions, um, except for the school police. Um, and I think that we need to start that soon. So I know Dr. Moran is going to reach out to the union president so we can enter into MOUs because we're going to have to make some, make some decisions of what's going to happen between April 6th and May 4th. And I'm, I really need to have the school committee involved in that so it can be vetted out um, and we can figure out how um, everybody, and again, this has been, we, we, there's no playbook for this uh, like we have for blizzards or snow days. So none of us, um, we're all working through this together and trying to do the best we can. Um, but and there's a lot of, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of employees, MTAs, paraprofessionals, um, and, and other employees, long-term subs, um, that um, they could be assisting during this time, and they've all reached out and want to assist, and we also with the custodians. But I think we're going to have to come up with formal MOUs that would get us from April 6th to, to May 4th. So I'd like to um, try to start working on those and have a discussion about uh, on those at a finance subcommittee meeting next Thursday night. Members of the committee, that would be um, April 2nd, which would be a week from this evening. Um, if we could t entertain a motion on that, it would be at 7 o'clock. Again, it would be um, it would be in accordance with uh, the, the new revised uh, uh, Governor Baker, which was the open meeting revision dated March 12, 2020. So I'd entertain a motion for a designation of a finance subcommittee next Thursday night, April 2nd at 7 p.m. Is there a motion on that, please? No question on the motion. Okay, there's a question on the motion by Mr. Sullivan. Uh, the question is, we have contract negotiations Thursday, April 2nd at 6 o'clock at Central. Is that going to be a virtual meeting or, or is that canceled? I can tell you, Mr. Sullivan, on, on the city side as mayor, I, I've, I've put all uh, contract negotiations um, for the different unions that are applicable to me on, on hold at this time. Um, the, the unions that I've spoken to want to do face-to-face, -face and I think it's more appropriate. So I can't opine on, on the question you just asked. Um, I don't know if the superintendent uh, has any information relative to Mr. Sullivan's inquiry. Um, Dr. Moran, do we have any information on that? Uh, this is Kathy Moran. I'd, I'd have to find out exactly which union Mr. Sullivan's talking about. The lunch grill, Kathy. Okay, I will check with that union tonight, and I will um, send something to Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Dr. Moran. Um, and even if that would was going to uh, take place, that would be at six o'clock. Um, do we have a projection on on? Um, on a seven o'clock uh, subcommittee of the finance committee, does that seven o'clock or seven thirty uh, time frame work for the committee? Yes, it does. Work for me. Okay, and I know Mr. Minicello yes. made a motion. Mr. Minicello made a motion for a seven o'clock April second subcommittee. Is there a second on that motion, please? Second. Okay, so we need to take a roll call. As chair, I say yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes, please. Ms. Azak. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Yes. Mr. D'Agostino. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, uh, yes. Ms. Sullivan. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. All right. It's duly uh, unanimous. We will uh, schedule a subcommittee, and we'll be virtual again. Um, and it's going to be one week from this evening, 7 p.m., which will be Thursday, April 2nd. Mr. Superintendent, any additional information you'd like to share with the committee this evening? Um, um, the, un, the, under the um, student opportunity, unfinished business? Yes. We'll, yep, we'll, we'll go on to number five on the agenda, which is Unfinished Business Student Opportunity Act three-year district plan. Mr. Superintendent, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so right now, um, we also should have word probably tomorrow or on Monday 
about the Student Opportunity Act plans that actually this, we were supposed to be voting on uh, tonight. Uh, we were told by the Department of Ed that they did file with the state to um, hold those off until either May for, due to be um, on May 1st or June 1st. Um, we haven't got an exact date on that, but um, we did. Um, we're, we were told to put those on hold. We're just waiting for the new date of when they're going to be due, and that has to be determined by uh, the state uh, representatives. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Any questions for the superintendent relative to that? Seeing none, we'll, we'll move on to agenda item number six, which is new business. Um, I don't know if any of the uh, committee members have any new business, but I do want to um, publicly thank Jess Hodges as well. Um, the city of Brockton, at least out of my office, we don't have a communications director as, as of yet. Uh, and Jess, during this COVID-19, has just been a really wonderful resource, setting up interviews for the superintendent and myself with WATD and and, and, and news outs to, uh, to get, really get the information out to the general public. So I do want to publicly thank Jess. Um, were there any other committee members that had any um, new business that they'd like to share at this time? Seeing none. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Ms. Azak, please, first. Okay. I just wanted to... Um, just thank everyone again um, and our superintendent, our school department, everyone's really come together in a short period of time to really, um, you know, it's amazing if you look back and see what we've done in less than two weeks. Um, and I also wanted to thank Chartwells. Uh, a couple of weeks ago when we first started the grab and go, I was able to stop by um, and, you know, I, I know our numbers are growing. The more that we, we let the parents, um, a lot of the families know about the grab and go, a lot of them are getting out there. And it was really nice to see some of our principals out there getting the packets out to the students. You see the smiling faces on the students. They really do miss school. Um, and, and it's really nice when you see the principals, you know, being able to see their students and, and catch up for a couple of seconds, um, you know, as they're getting what they need. And I wanted to, um, also mention Cradle to Crayons has been amazing to us. Again, we have such an amazing partnership with them. They uh, went ahead and they were able to personally deliver. Usually I go into Brighton with some of our facility trucks. Um, they're tied up right now with the Grab and Go program. So Cradle to Crayons was able to send one of their drivers with six pallets and we have toys uh, some, some are used, some are, some, you know, slightly used. A lot of them are new. Uh, you know, school supplies, some hygiene products. They sent us diapers uh, that we're going to try to um, give to a lot of the um, young families. And um, so uh, we're trying to work on that, and it'll be a first come, first serve. But that should be sometime next week. I'll have Jess put that on the um, BP, um, the Brockton Public Schools um, Facebook page, just to let everybody know. Um, but again, just we've all come together. It's teamwork, but it's pretty amazing what we've all done in a short period of time. No one's ever gone through this. Would we have ever imagined we're going to go through something like this? Never in my life would I have ever thought, you know, the whole entire world is affected. But um, we should all be very proud for what we've done in a short period. So thank you to our superintendent and to our mayor and my, my fellow school committee members um, and our BPS family. Thank you so much, Ms. Azak, and thank you for your efforts as well. It makes a big difference, so thank you. I believe there was another committee member that wanted to say something. Yes, Tim Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan, please. I, too, wanted to thank uh, Troutwell's Food, the manager there, Tom Burke, Mike the Chef, which is Mike Dombrowski, and the lunch girl, Michelle, Sergio, Mary, Debbie, and Christine, and our truck driver, Lee. That group has been with me for the last two weeks. I feel like they're my family now. I'm getting to know them well. They do a nice job. I just wanted to thank them. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. We, we, we really do just, uh, you know, we're fortunate to have really dedicated uh, workers and, and citizens that have come together um, 
right. during this challenging time. Are there any other committee members that would like to offer any new business or any thoughts? May I ask? This is Aldo, if no one else has anything. Aldo, please. Um, I would like, I, after my discussion earlier about the payment of employees, I would really feel comfortable more comfortable if we had a motion to continue paying the salary and hourly employees as this coronavirus keeps the schools shut down? Yeah, I mean, we could do belts and suspenders. I, yeah, I think that'd be appropriate. I mean, we did we did take the special vote um, on that Sunday, but uh, yeah, we could dot the I's and cross the T's. So if nobody objects, we'll go back to, um, uh, uh, let me see, it was Agenda 4, Subsection B, Payroll for Employees. I'll entertain a motion to maintain the status quo and pay like we've already authorized. Motion to make the Motion was made, I believe, by, was that Mr. Minicello? Yep. Seconded by Mr. Sullivan. We'll take a roll call vote. The chair says yes. Mr. Minicello? Yes. Ms. Azak? Yes. Ms. Mendez? Yes. Mr. D'Agostino? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Unanimous vote, status quo, payroll for employees will continue as our previous vote confirmed by this ratification vote. Thank you, Mr. Petronio. You. Was there any other committee members that had any new business? I have um, some new business. Yes, please. Superintendent. Yes, please, Mr. Superintendent. So, um, I'm going to have Ethan jump in here, but um, I do need a approval from the school committee to expand uh, Brockton Public Schools email addresses to allow them to be given to stu uh, students in pre-K to 5 um, uh, with our um, IT um, policy. Uh, we only allow uh, email addresses, Brockton Public School email addresses for six, grade 6 to 12. But I think at this time, um, to help families that do not have email addresses, if we can move to um, supplying those for all our students, pre-K to five, that would have, every student would have an email address, and that could be used by their parents to help log in to some of our learning sites and also help us uh, moving forward with the, um, with our online learning uh, platforms. So, um, uh, Ethan, I don't know if you want to jump in and, um, and provide any more detailed information about that. Um, I'm happy to, Mike. As our superintendent said, it would be helpful not so much for um you know under normal circumstances you, you would say why would a preschool or kindergartner need a uh, email address but by having a bpsma.org uh, email address we can ensure that the student will only receive emails from inside our organization and that is a very good thing for security we um, have it, it enables us in this um, time to be able to communicate um, remotely with people, and it just really it, it enhances security. It helps with uh, rostering. It helps with the assignment of uh, certain programs. So um, there really isn't as much of a need for it during normal conditions when it's very easy to pick up the phone, drive over to the school, and talk to people. You can pick up the phone now, but you cannot drive over to the school and talk to people face to face. So this is a great communication tool, and it will really help our learning uh, platforms. Thank you, Dr. Cancel, uh, for that summary and the superintendent. I'm going to entertain a motion to open up email addresses through pre-K through fifth grade. Uh, is there a motion, please? Motion to open up email that? addresses from pre-K to fifth grade. Motion was, made, motion was made by Mr. D'Agostino. It was seconded by Ms. Azak. We'll take a roll call vote. Chair, Mr. Sullivan says yes. Mr. Minicello? Yes. Ms. Azak? Yes. Ms. Mendez? Yes. Mr. D'Agostino, please? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Unanimous vote is ratified, and uh, email access capability is provided pre-K to fifth grade Brockton Public Schools. 
Is there any other new business before us tonight? I have one thing. I just want to, um, again, this is the new guidelines just came out this morning from the Department of Education. I emailed those out to you. Um, and as you can see, um, uh, I'll let you know on the back um, that these guidelines were signed off on by the Mass Association of School Committees, the, the uh, American Federation of Teachers, the Mass Association of School Superintendents, the Massachusetts Parent Teacher Association, and the MTA, the Massachusetts Teacher Association. So I want to ask Kim Gibson um, to jump on and just give us a, um, a brief overview on the work the MTA did with the Department of Education and, and the other organizations that I just mentioned to, to lead us through these new guidelines. I want to be clear that these guidelines will be posted on our website, and these guidelines, we're supposed to follow these guidelines going into effect on April 6th. Um, so that's what we're working on now to tr make sure that we're following these and every doing everything we can for the students that fall under these guidelines and everything we have been doing for our students. So I I'd like to ask um, uh, BEA President Kim Gibson to just um, come on and just speak about how uh, this, this committee worked together, the group of people worked together with Commissioner Riley to put these, uh, these guidelines in place. Hi, everyone. This is Kim Gibson, BEA President. Um, so I do want to share that MTA, we have been having conference calls, just as all of you have been doing the same thing. And they were key, um, along with AFT Massachusetts, in drafting this guidance. And it was really key to um, represent those of us in the districts that have been less fortunate than the Wellesleys and the, the Brooklines out there. Um, one of the things that was important was that remote learning isn't just online learning. And I think um, we need to keep that in the forefront of, of what we're doing that we need our students to be engaged at home in a new way. This is actually an exciting time for everyone because we can change how we've been doing things. Um, but as you'll see, the guidance is, is still needs some work. Um, they are hoping to get out new guidelines for special education and English learners as well. And hopefully that's out within the next couple of days as some of the other guidance are waiting for. Thank you, Ms. Gibson. Any, any, any questions of the uh, committee members? Thank and you. I just want to say sure, that, Superintendent. Uh, I've, um, I've seen superintendents going back and forth on emails. I'm on a superintendent email listserv and, uh, who really struggle with their relationships with their union um, and some of the MOUs that were put together. And, again, none of these MOUs have anything to do to, with, with compensation. And some of them took days and days and days to put together because of a poor relationship. But... You know, Kim and I and her team and my team were able to work together, and I think it was less than 24 hours to be able to put the guidelines in that we've been following. Um, so I just, I, I just can't say enough about the relationship Kim has with myself and with the members of my team and um, her reputation with her, her mem members. And, um, you know, she's a pleasure to work with and always has the best interests of the students at the forefront. So I want to thank her for her leadership during this during this tough time because it has been very effective and very, very helpful to us. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. And again, uh, Kim's a, a proud graduate of class of 1988, in 1988, Brockton High. So uh, we thank her for her efforts on behalf of the BEA. Uh, any other questions to committee members for uh, Ms. Gibson? Thank you, Kim. Committee members, any other new business? Committee members, I need to read uh, the announcement. Uh, again, this is a learning process for us, but um, I need to read this just to go on the record. Out of respect for public health and in response to the governor's declared state of emergency, this meeting will be closed to the public and interested parties can instead access the deliberations via live stream featured prominently on the Brockton Public Schools website, bpsma.org. This meeting is being held in accordance with Governor Charlie Baker's signed open meeting law order dated March 12, 2020, which uh, relieves a public body from the requirement of Section 20 of Chapter 30A that it conduct its meeting in a public place that is open and physically access accessible to the public, provided that the public body makes provisions to ensure public access to the deliberations of the public body for interested members of the public through adequate alternative means. And we have definitely done that this evening. 
Uh, I do want to uh, take a moment as mayor and as chair of the school committee to just give each and every one of you an update. As I sit here right now in my office, we have 43 confirmed cases of coronavirus. Uh, Brockton residents are confirmed COVID-19 uh, positive. Um, we're, we're taking all the precautions we need to do. I have three conference calls per week with the healthcare professionals, the CEOs of the hospital, Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, Father Bill's Mainspring, uh, two calls per week with all the nursing home, rest homes, and assisted uh, uh, facilities in the city, and two, day, uh, two calls per week with all the adult daycare facilities in the city of Brockton. Um, having regular updates with the governor and Congressman Lynch and uh, U.S. Senator Markey and, and Warren's office today. Um, but again, this is 43 people. Um, unfortunately, we, we project and we listen to the healthcare professionals. This is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. But we need to maintain all the precautions that the healthcare professionals are telling us. And we keep saying this, but it's, it's true. Social distancing of at least six feet. Uh, today we gave a, uh, a video conference, myself and the superintendent, and we were about eight feet apart. It didn't look, it didn't look right, uh, but it was the right thing to do. Again, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Disinfect uh, all hard surfaces. And again, stay at home, right? Stay in and around your home. This isn't an extended vacation. Uh, and that's why we're doing this virtual uh, call today, and we'll continue to do that. Um, with that being said, um, we, we will be concluding the agenda tonight, but we're going into an executive session, and that's pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3. It's to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, Brockton Educational Paraprofessionals Association, and IBAATEA, and Brockton Educational Association. I need, to, uh, I need to request a form of a motion which would be properly seconded to enter executive session, and then I'll take a roll call vote. I need to, a motion on that, please. Motion to go into executive session. Motion made by Dagest Mr. D'Agostino. Seconded by who? Clifford Murray. Second. Seconded by Ms. Mendez. Now I take a roll call vote, please, to enter executive session. The chair says yes, Mr. Minicello. Yes. Ms. Azak. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Yes. Mr. D'Agostino, please. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Ms. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. So, members of the committee, we will be going into executive session. At this time, the uh, teleconferencing, the live stream will be shut off uh, because they're not privileged under executive session. It's not privy to the general public. Um, and the, uh, the audio taping of this also will uh, be shut off. So we'll just take a, about a two-second delay on this if we could.